What's up guys, this is Desm101, back with a sort of update video for you, and this is of course to talk about my PlayStation TV. Now if you saw the previous video, it was a 2019, uh, is it worth having a PS TV in that year, and so we're doing PS TV in 2020. And if you remember last time, I was running most of my system off of this USB drive there and what I was doing was switching the memory cards as a base um, so for example I would put in this memory card if I wanted to use one of those two blue USBs or the one that's in there right now it's a 16 gig and it's basically tied to this USB drive so I discovered that I wasn't able to swap those with the memory card you have to basically use USB with the memory card that's the way mine is set up right now I hadn't made any modifications and here's some of my old memory cards on there and I actually have a little cheat sheet here it tells me what games are on which card I color coded them with some markers um, on the cards themselves and so what we have here is an SD2 Vita which that's what I'm using on the actual PlayStation Vita that I own but I wanted to upgrade the PlayStation TV because I'm having some problems with it. I did mention them a little bit in my last video and I'll talk about that a little bit more today. Uh, but basically the plan is to go ahead and upgrade it. This uh, SD2 Vita, have that as the main system instead of this USB. And we're gonna be using this SanDisk 128 gig micro SD. And so once we have that all set up, then we'll go through some homebrew and some updates and see how it's holding up through this year. All right, so let's get started. All right, so first we'll start here with my old setup. And this is what happens when I turn on the PS TV. You're given all these bubbles, which are basically um, skeleton files. They don't actually open anything you have to go ahead and insert the USB and mount it here in Vita Shell. So every time I would turn on the PS TV, I would have to perform these steps. It takes a couple moments. You can't just leave it plugged in there, the USB. You have to plug it in each time. And then a lot of these wouldn't work, so I tried downloading Super Mario War several times different VPKs and I could never get it to boot. So this is an issue that I dealt with and I wasn't really installing anything else. It seemed like that USB had become corrupt. So what I did is I went ahead and updated and moved the content over. I used a really good guide from Blaine Locklear. I'll share the link down in the description. And basically what he instructed is for me to go in here and use this tool. It's the storage manager for SD2 Vita, and the plugin manager lets me go ahead and set that up very easily, and it does all the config for me. I just basically have to specify, and so I just went ahead and moved those to the correct settings, mostly focusing on, you know, how did I want to access the internal memory. Not a huge deal since basically all the content will be running off of my SD2 Vita with the micro SD. So that all went smooth, and we'll go ahead and check out some homebrew now. So after updating it, the homebrew browser was working properly and I was able to run and install a bunch of games. And so we'll go ahead and go through those really quick and let you know what I thought of them. So I was very happy to get Super Mario War working fine. I have it on my PlayStation Vita, but I hadn't been able to get it working on the PlayStation TV until now. So that was a big plus for me. And what this is, is a really neat homebrew game that's kind of like a battle royale where you just have to try to jump on each other or attack each other with bombs and um, or from blocks below. It's pretty chaotic and pretty fun. I think you can 
um, use another plugin to access the four player mode on here. So I recommend checking this game out. I'm really happy to have it working here. This is Tropical Zone from Vita Hex. And this one is still in an early stage, but it looks pretty good so far. You can go ahead and explore this island and cruise around in vehicles in this Jeep. And I think it looks promising so far. Here is a fun little simple port of River Raid by Lappy, who does quite a few games here on the Homebrew browser. And nothing too crazy or complex about it, very simple game. But I wanted to check it out because I was a fan of the old school River Raid game from Atari by Activision. And this is decent to check out. Um, updates will probably improve it some more. So I, I see that that's a common thing on the homebrew browsers. You'll see updates to some of these games sometimes. And then up next is Super Console Wars. A pretty impressive game. It has an intro and some really cool music and stuff, some cool little art style to it. But the game is really simple and it's still kind of fun and addictive. It's got kind of like a, a run and gun theme to it and it's really easy to die in these traps that are hard to see in the ground. So what you gotta do is just make it through these checkpoints that you see at the bottom and you can get upgraded abilities like upgrade shots and um, power-ups like jumping and stuff like that double jumping Pretty cool game. I thought it was pretty funny and I spent quite a bit of time playing it And here is Vita Fighters, a cool little fighting game that's made in Unity. And it has some simple blocky renditions of some of your favorite fighting game characters. And it plays okay. It definitely lacks optimization. It's obviously an early version of the game. But you can tell a lot of time has gone into working on the character models and giving them movesets and everything and combos. So it definitely looks promising. Once it has some optimization and kind of a um, little better controls and things like that, I think this could be a pretty fun fighter for the system. Next one is Dark Paradigm, which is a early first person shooter, early build. And it's just got a basic level and some enemies that you can check out and shoot at. But it does have a creepy vibe to it, and it looks pretty cool so far. I could imagine this being a pretty good first-person shooter, kind of like survival horror game. So another one that looks promising, but it's still kind of early to be able to tell. Fun to check out, though. Okay, and here is Dungeon Rush. This one took me a while to figure out how to play. It looks like you're just going to be kind of top-down gameplay but it's actually like a snake game uh, if you've played like the snake game where you have to eat the apple and it took me a while to figure out that my character is the one with the diamond on him there and you have to avoid all these traps and things that are coming after you so it's actually pretty complicated kind of fun and here is hyper princess pitch this is probably my favorite game out of the ones I checked out on the homebrew browser from this time and it's a game that was actually released a while back in 2015 on for Windows. And it's a twin stick shooter with a Christmas theme. So it's really great for this time of year. And I thought it was really fun because I love Smash TV and twin stick shooters in general. And this one played really well and it's got impressive animation and graphics. Definitely recommend you check this game out for your PlayStation Vita or PlayStation TV. Really fun game.
So I was having problem renting any ports on here and I think that's because a lot of the ports require source files for the original versions. So I hadn't gone into a ton of work to get those going yet, but I'll try that and probably do another update. Here's Destroy. This is a Bomberman clone. Very simple and kind of like an old DOS game. But still, it's pretty cool. If you like Bomberman and these kind of games, old DOS games, you might want to check this one out. I thought it was pretty hard to kill some of these enemies. I spent a while. I mean, Bomberman is pretty addictive. And here is a couple launchers, starting with the Hexflow launcher. And it just gives you another option of a UI to use to open your applications. It's pretty stylish. I saw some other ones on there that you can use. And here's another one. It's just called the Vita Launcher. And it goes a bit more comprehensive into your library. It takes a while to load it. But you can see here, you can access just about everything that's in your device. You can see all my PSP games here. And you should be able to launch them. It might take some extra setup and some extra utilities to get it working right. Make sure you have like the latest versions of Adrenaline and stuff like that. And then we'll go back and check out some more of these plugins. You can see that there's a, a spot for Adrenaline plugins to improve functionality on the Adrenaline. And then here's a ton that you have here for all the different features and things that you can add to your device, like custom button configurations, uh, different things like memory card management, um, doing different types of upscaler and visualization settings. And it's real simple and easy to use. You just find the one that you want to install, and if there's an additional file that will let you know about that and in most cases it will download it in some cases you might have to go and find that file but the ease of use of this auto plugin is very nice so I did end up installing some overclocking plugins that made uh, some games function a little better and overall there is just a ton of stuff to explore on here to get the most out of it so I recommend going through that and kind of checking out. See the ones that are good for you. Some of these ones are, are really interesting, like volume settings. And we'll check out the sharp scaler real quick so you can see the different settings that you can adjust for the output of the video on the PlayStation TV. And that really showcases some of the amazing features that you can do with PlayStation TV right now when it's hacked in the direction it's going in. So just imagine another year from now and there'll probably be even more settings, more tweaks and more adjustments that you can do to the system to optimize it and getting working as as you like it. So customizable and really flexible for different systems and emulation. Now I didn't really talk about emulation. The emulation is pretty much the same as it was for my last video so I'm just going to refer you back to that one. And it's still good, it's still solid, there wasn't a ton of improvements, there was some additional systems, but I was still just using Game Boy Advance, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Arcade, MAME, uh, Final Burn Alpha, Neo Geo. Those all have really good support. Uh, I hadn't really done a ton of like Dreamcast testing or Saturn. Those are on there, and then also obviously PlayStation 1 and Adrenaline works great. So in summary, there is a ton of content here to check out from the plugins, utilities, homebrew, ports, emulation, of course the Vita libraries, uh, you know there are still games coming out for the library, and the guides, there's a great scene to back it up, a lot of people are really into it, so you can get some good advice, some good tips, some good videos, go to the Reddit, and the cons, well it's kind of difficult to set it up, you know it's, it's a lot easier than it was when it first came out, as far as Henkaku and Enzo. But, uh, you know, still to get the most out of it, you're going to have to mess around. And I see that with emulation. A lot of people complain the emulation is not very good. And it's kind of like one of those things where the more time you put into it, kind of figuring out, the better results you're going to get. In most cases, that's not true for everything. Uh, some things are getting very slow support, like there's not really a lot of DS support. But there's things like uh, N64, there's that... Uh, 
Grand Theft Auto 3 port, so we didn't cover that, but that, that was big news when it came out. So there's a lot to check out here. So if you're someone who likes to kind of do this as a hobby, and that's something that sounds fun to you, that's where I would recommend it for those kind of people. Um, but otherwise, you know, if you just want something plug and play and simple, you might want to look at some of those consoles that you can get online or a mini system like that. But for me, this is really one of the best mini consoles for emulation and for some more recent games. And that's going to wrap it up for today, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for supporting me this year in 2020. I really appreciate it. It's been a great year for me here on YouTube. And this is the last video of the year. So I want to thank everyone for your support and watching these videos. I really appreciate that. And I'm wishing you all the best in 2021. All right, take care. This is Desm 101. I'll see you next time. Peace.